Okay, pop culture class, welcome to your second installment of video lectures in our history of film. Um, this one will discuss new or contemporary Hollywood, which started in the 1960s and continues to the present. Okay, so just the same format as we used in our previous lecture, let's start first by talking about what was going on in each decade of this period, and then we'll talk about the style and feel of the movies. All right, so in the 1960s, um, first know that the primary audience for movies is the, the young. Um, remember that in previous decades, um, everybody was going to movies. It was the pastime. Well, movies move in the 1960s towards being more of um, something that young people have time and money to do. 80% um, of moviegoers in the 1960s were between the ages of 16 and 25. And so you find that the topics of movies that were being produced in the 1960s would be things that would be of interest to that demographic of people. We also have um, the counterculture being a large part of movie uh, topics in the 1960s. Um, you know, the big event happening in the 60s and early 1970s is the Vietnam War. And as you remember from history class, the Vietnam War really causes people in America, especially young people, to question the traditional values of our country. And... Um, so lots of movie topics um, deal with, with those same questions of right and wrong. Are values universal or are they subjective? Um, the counterculture being, um, you know, the, the big group that questions that um, um, with, uh, you know, the hippie movement, um, the civil rights movements. And so the, the topics of the movies tend to center around um, that kind of uh, feel of counterculture on um, that very anti-establishment uh, fighting for freedoms at the time. The other big thing that happens concerning film in the 1960s is that we move away from the Hayes office, which you remember Hayes um, was, uh, you know, the former postmaster general who has been who ga was given the task of censoring movies for the government. Um, even long after Hayes is gone, um, that office is still known as the Hayes office. And so in 1966, we actually uh, move away from government control of movie ratings um, and move to an independent rating system by the Motion Picture Association of America. And so we have a little more self-regulation here, but um, independent uh, from the government uh, rating. And the rating system was is the one that we still use today, right? G, P, G, rated R. Um, to let audiences know um, the type of subject material that's covered in the movie that they are about to see. Okay, in the 1970s, we have some changes related to film. Um, if you remember from our previous show, we talked about the fact that directors of movies used to be someone that moved up the movie ranks at a big movie studio to earn the right of being a director, and that we saw a shift in post-classical Hollywood to directing being um, you know, more of, a, of an artist in, in the creation of a story known as the movie. Uh, directors uh, in the 1970s um, seem to, to find the perfect combination. They become what you know, is known as the total package. And so in the 70s, you see a lot of, lot of wonderful movies by well-known directors, many of whom are still around today, that can make a critically acclaimed film that is also a blockbuster hit. And so it took a, uh, directors until the 70s to find that perfect blend between making a movie that appeals to the masses, but making a movie that is a critically acclaimed like, piece of art. And, and it seems as if there are a lot of directors in the 1970s that really accomplished that. Vietnam, of course, is still happening in the early 1970s, uh, but a lot of, of turns for the worst occur in the Viet Vietnam War in the 70s, which means that the Vietnam War becomes a very sensitive subject to Americans. And so you don't see a lot of movies about Vietnam being made while the Vietnam War is happening. Which is different from, remember, what we talked about concerning World War II. In the 1940s, tons of war movies were being made as the war was happening in an attempt to boost morale here at home. 
Vietnam is so sensitive at the time that it's not even really approached in, in very many films at all. The other thing that we see as a characteristic of the 1970s is um, the 70s is known as the me decade. So that political consciousness of the counterculture of the 60s, the fighting for the civil rights freedoms, the fighting against the establishment, the fighting against the Vietnam War goes away. And Americans in general become very self-absorbed. And that's why it's known as the me decade. And so the me decade just means that films in the 70s tend to be uh, more geared towards escape and entertainment, less uh, as a form of social commentary like they had been in the 50s and 60s. If we look at what's going on in the 1980s, we're going to see two key things here. Um, the blockbuster trend of the 70s continues in the 80s, by the way. Um, but we also have what is known as the echo boom. And so perhaps in history class you remember that the huge, huge um, surge of, of births that we had, uh, babies being born after soldiers re returned home from World War II, uh, and so individuals born in the 1950s and early 1960s were known as baby boomers. Well, in the 1980s, we have what's known as an echo boom. Like think of throwing a stone into a pond, right? The ripple effect. And so in the 1980s is when you see all the baby boomers having kids. And so we see this huge influx of people who are kids in the 1980s. That leads to a ton of family-friendly movies and coming-of-age films that are geared towards teen audiences. And so classic 1980s, uh, you know, whether it be the Indiana Jones trilogy or whether it be the Back to the Future movies, um, whether it be any of your um, teen movies, uh, Breakfast Club, um, 16 Candles, right? There's lots of family-friendly movies coming out in the 80s to um, allow the baby boomers to take their kids to see a show. We also have science fiction becoming very popular in the 1980s. Lots of movies about space and um, lots of movies, you know, um, just science fiction in general. Um, in the 1980s, the U.S. space program is huge. Um, Ronald Reagan um, had a program that was actually nicknamed Star Wars, right? So the President of the United States in the early 1980s had this idea of that we were going to put missiles in space so that if Russia ever happened to attack us, you know, we could shoot down their missiles from space. And so Reagan's Star Wars, or it was actually the Strategic Defense Initiative, the SDI program, um, is really big in the news. And so that just means that anything futuristic becomes you know, like super cool in the 1980s, and you see that reflected a lot in the movies. Okay, in the 1990s, we have the revival of indie or independent films. And so you see a lot of directors um, not um, filming movies with the big movie houses, but having a lot of really good um, uh, hits at the, you know, blockbuster hits. And so when you think indie films of the 1990s, you're thinking about people that you still hear about uh, today. Quentin Tarantino, Spike Lee, Kevin Smith, right? They all had their start with movies uh, in the 1990s. The 90s also gives us the rise of CG, right? Computer graphics. And so that leads to a lot of uh, cooler special effects, something that really wasn't possible before the computer technology was available. Um, and we also have DVDs coming on the market. And so with the onset of DVDs um, as a technology, you see an explosion of re-releases. And so fans could experience you know, their favorite movies from the past um, decades, but they could experience ones from the current decade too with all sorts of extra bonus features, director's cuts, deleted scenes, interviews with the actors. Okay, it's, and so for, for film fans, the onset of DVDs becomes a, a, a great addition in that you can really do a lot more um, or, or get into a movie that you like a, a lot more in depth than you could prior to DVDs. Okay, our last uh, decade that we'll talk about, the 2000s, 
okay? Um, technology plays a huge role in, in movies in the 2000s. Um, technology just expands movie concepts, the things that we could do. I mean, if you think about movies like Avatar, right? Those things wouldn't have been possible uh, prior to uh, computer technology that exists in the 2000s. Um, documentaries and foreign films gain more popularity in the 2000s just as genres that people are actually interested uh, in watching in a more large uh, scale form and <coughs> excuse me the internet uh, really leads to an explosion of movie fans and that again anyone can be a film critic now you don't have to work for a big newspaper like the new york times or a magazine like entertainment weekly um you can get on imdb or rotten tomatoes and, and critique whatever film you um have seen and so you really see um the internet leading uh to some changes in the film industry uh and in how things are released um and, and how a movie can acquire a fan base um, even before it's released, honestly, with the internet. Okay, so the style and feel of contemporary Hollywood movies. Okay? The movie must have it all. Um, movies are competing with all for sorts of entertainment. Uh, the internet, television, radio. Um, it doesn't, you know, gaming systems. Uh, people can be entertained in a lot of different ways in contemporary society. And so in order to get us to pay however hundreds of dollars a movie ticket costs these days, right? It better be good. If I'm going to spend, you know, if my date night's going to cost me 50 bucks to go to the movie, it better have everything, right? And what do we mean by everything? Good plots good acting are no longer enough it's got to have those but it's got to have action it's got to have good special effects it's got to be filmed well right the cinematography ha the lighting everything has to be there in order for it to catch on as a blockbuster hit and so you know the more competing forms of entertainment we have as a culture the more movies have had to step it up in the contemporary period in order to compete for our time and in essence our money and so there you have it. There's our brief history of film. Uh, bring any questions that you have to class. And again, be ready to take these notes and apply them to the different film clips that you see in class. So as always, thanks for listening.